special effects. They've been around since the first movie ever created, so it was not an industry-changing event. But what was, is the use of a computer for special effects, or otherwise known as digital special effects. <laughs> Special effects are a highly evolving industry that has come through many industry changing events. Before things went digital, special effects did not look as good and were in some cases more expensive. When the new technology was introduced, people were very amazed and in the long run it opened the doors for the accelerated advancements in special effects. Digital special effects were a fresh new idea because they expanded the limits of the special effects before it. Before digital special effects, movie makers used different techniques to create some of the effects we use today. A very popular technique was stop motion. It's normally performed with clay models of any object. The way that it's performed is by moving a model millimeter by millimeter and taking a picture each time it's moved. Stop motion was really made popular with the help of a man named Ray Harry Houston. He has helped make most of the famous stop motion movies such as King Kong, Mighty Joe Young, 20 Million Miles to Earth, it came from beneath the sea, the seventh voyage of Sinbad, and Jason and the Argonauts. Stop motion is a very time consuming process. A typical stop motion movie is filmed at 24 frames per second. Since the models are moved frame by frame, it takes 24 model movements to make one second of film. When making a stop motion movie, on average it takes one day to create five seconds of film. An example of stop motion being a time consuming process is in the movie Jason and the Argonauts. It took movie makers almost five months to create a five minute scene. Now don't get me wrong, stop motion is still used today, but it's prime years are over. The transition to digital was not fast. A huge advancement in stop motion was used in the 1993 movie called Jurassic Park. The digital input device was a contraption created to make it easy for people who are used to stop motion be able to create computer animation. Two men by the names of Phil Tibbet and Craig Hayes created the digital input device. The way that the digital input device works is by putting tiny sensors all over the models and each movement, frame by frame, is recorded on a computer. The digital input device was invented so that movies could eventually pull away from stop motion to computer animation. The digital input device's last great use was in the 1997 movie Starship Troopers. After that movie, the digital input device was barely used because now people are trained to make computer generated images without a middleman. The digital input device did create a new industry because instead of the sensors being on stop motion figures, they can be on actual people. An example of this is in the movie Avatar. An additional device that was used before digital special effects was the optical printer. It was invented in 1931 and is used to pretty much add a background to whatever they are filming. So let's say a movie took place in a deserted planet somewhere in space. The movie makers could easily make the ground using a set, but what about the background? This is where the optical printer came in. They could create a matte or a drawn background and place it in the film. The optical printer is not just reserved for mats. You can take actual hand-taken pictures and use them as backgrounds. Get the idea? Optical printers are not lost with time. 100 times more advanced optical printers are used today, but they are slowly fading because they do not meet the power that a computer can generate. It's easy to see that the optical printer was, and still is, a successful tool in special effects making. If you're confused on what the optical printer is, then just think of it as the old version of the green screen. It allows you to be in many places at one time. So let's say, Russia, the rainforest, or even the sunny beach. It's just whatever you can think of. The rotoscope is a device that enables the artist to practically draw on the film. Rotoscoping is performed by having an artist sit at a special easel that has a movie projected on it. To get animation, the movie is projected frame by frame. Rotoscoping's main use was for cartoons. It made it easy for artists to just draw the characters over a background instead of drawing everything over and over again. A very advanced use of the rotoscope was in the movie Star Wars. To achieve the realism of the lightsabers, rotoscope artists worked frame by frame to add color, make them glowing, and add falling sparks. Since the 1915 invention of the rotoscope by Max Flesher, things have changed. The rotoscope is rarely used because computers have replaced it. 
Many computer programs can do what a rotoscope does, but a program called After Effects by Adobe can do it best. Rotoscoping was a huge part of the past with special effects, but bigger and better things are always coming out that revolutionize the way that movies are made. The use of the computer for special effects is the most industry-changing event that the industry has ever had. What the computer did was practically replace equipment with computer programs. In some cases, it made things cheaper and less time-consuming. With rotoscoping, since you can now do it on the computer, you don't have to use the special drawing utensils that can be very expensive. With stop motion, the use of a computer sped things up exponentially because they are using computer models, not clay ones. Since the first use of a computer for special effects, things have really changed. Film strips have almost been replaced by memory cards, but some older filmmakers still use film strips. George Lucas said, The issue is not a contest. This is not about digital taking over and film disappearing. This is simply adding a new medium or a new range to the cinematic experience. Computer-generated images are a huge part of digital special effects. They are 3D images of any object. They can be placed in any type of film, such as cartoons and even live-action movies. To place CGI in live-action movies can be very challenging and extremely expensive. Also, putting it in movies is always the most expensive part of the movie. Since the beginning of digital special effects, CGI has stuck around the longest because it proves to be a very good way to create things that don't or can't ever exist. Thousands of movies have CGI in them, but there are three movies that have really revolutionized the computer-generated images industry. Third, Jurassic Park. To make the dinosaurs look so real and have them interact with the people so seamlessly was amazing. Second, Forrest Gump. This movie made people starstruck because its visual effects were so believable. And first is Toy Story. It was the first movie to be 100% computer-generated. Toy Story debatedly created a whole new industry of movies. Computer-generated images are an industry that is staying and will be looked forward to for years to come. There has been some speculation on how digital special effects are ruining the film industry because some think that special effects are replacing actors. Acting is an art. It's not something you can program into a computer. With that said, people need to see and understand that a movie is nothing without good acting. If filmmakers learn to use special effects appropriately, then movies will be much better because today with this technology, you can pretty much explore the depths of your imagination. Movies are a way for people to come together because it's a part of the human culture. The more we learn about movies, we find out there are no limits. Every day I see my dream. Every day I see my dream. Every day I see my dream. Every day I see my every day I see my dream. Every day I see my dream. Every day I see my dream. Every day I see my every day I see my dream. Every day I see my dream. Every day I see my dream.